Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we are building patches from scratch on the Behringer DeepMind. So in the last video in the series, we built a big, lush, ambient pad patch with lots of modulation and delay and shimmer reverb and all that business. So what I thought would be quite a fun contrast in this video is to go the other way and actually build a real, classic, monophonic lead sound. Okay, so let's jump in and let's start building the patch. So I'm going to hit program and compare to get to an initialized patch. So this patch that I'm looking to build, I'm going to draw inspiration from a mini Moog patch, which is quite well known. You can find it if you Google it called the Goom patch. Um, it's a real classic kind of um, Moogy uh, uh, mono lead sound. Obviously, the DeepMind is not a Moog, but I'm going to kind of use it as a, as a sort of sonic blueprint, something to sort of aim for. Okay, so let's establish a couple of things uh, to get started. So the first thing is, at the moment we've got a polyphonic sound. This is going to be a mono lead sound, so I'm going to head into the poly menu here. I'm going to go up to the polyphony setting here, and I'm going to swing across to mono 3. So mono 3 means I'm stacking up three oscillators each time I play a note. That, of course, is drawing influence from the mini Moog where you have those three oscillators. So the patch that I'm drawing inspiration from uh, is based around square waves, three square waves all running at once. So I'm going to come over here to the oscillator one section. I'm going to turn off my sawtooth wave. So at the moment, we're kind of getting this sort of weird, slightly thin, phasey sound. And the reason for that is that at the moment, we've got these three oscillators all running together and they are ever so nearly completely in tune. And what that does is it ends up creating lots and lots of phase cancellation, which is thinning out the sound, making it sound sort of distant and phasey. Uh, so what we want to do in order to get things thicker is actually make this sound less perfect. So one thing we could do is if we could introduce our unison detune, like, which is which is a nice sound, but uh, what it ends up doing is kind of creating this sort of constant detune. And, and what I'd rather do is introduce sort of a gradual over time drift of the oscillators. Obviously, uh, in order to do that on the DeepMind, we can go into the poly menu here and we can go down to the oscillator drift and we can introduce drift between the different oscillators. Something around there. I think sounds pretty, pretty neat. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to reproduce the way that it feels to play these sort of monophonic lead sounds. Uh, I know that kind of sounds like a, a, a weird thing, but very much part of those sounds is the way that you end up playing them. Lots of these sort of legato runs and all that kind of stuff. At the moment, one of the things that's kind of killing that vibe is the fact that sometimes when I press a key, it's quiet, and other times it's loud. That's the velocity sensitivity of the keyboard, obviously. Back in the uh, the days of the Mini Moog, velocity sensitive keyboards not quite as common. So I actually want to remove that capability from the DeepMind. Pretty straightforward to do if you want to remove the velocity sensitivity, which is always a good idea for these uh, sort of lead sounds. I think is if we come into the VCA menu here, and we've got here we've got the velocity sensitivity at the moment that's set halfway. So you can actually make things even more velocity sensitive. But actually, what I want to do is bring it all the way down. And then we've got that constant volume each side and immediately. If you're familiar with that kind of vibe, just the way that, that you play it and the, and the way that the keyboard responds really does add to that sound a whole lot. Now, similarly with the, uh, the VCA velocity sensitivity, the volume velocity sensitivity, there's currently, uh, although you can't really hear it because the filter's wide open at the moment, there's a similar thing going on with the VCF as well. So let's go into the VCF menu and do exactly the same thing where we've got the velocity sensitivity. We can turn that all the way down as well so that we don't get any changes in the filter when we're dealing uh, with how hard we're playing as well. So we've not got... But it's nice sort of it's a nice static sound. Yeah, it is a nice static sound because it's, it's what we're aiming for in this particular patch. Okay, so the final sort of uh, the way that the patch plays part of the puzzle here, I think, and it's arguably the most important one, is that 
patches like this need portamento. Something like that. Awesome. Okay, so uh, let's actually start to talk about the sound a little bit more. So we've got our three square waves at the moment. The first thing I want to do is I just want to darken the sound just a tiny little bit. Not much. Now this sounds like we've stolen quite a lot of brightness from the sound, and we have. But one of the ways that we can put brightness back in without having quite so much sizzle is to turn up the resonance on the filter because that's uh, this filter actually the cutoff isn't that far down it just feels that way because of how much uh, top end has disappeared but if we want to put some top end back in without bringing too much sizzle in instead of a bit more attack we can turn that resonance up a bit okay so um still feeling like it's lacking a little bit of uh, sort of front end attack. So let's introduce a little bit of envelope movement on the filter. So we can turn up the envelope here. We don't need to turn it up much, I don't think. I think a little bit about the way that this is decaying. So I think we probably, if we come into the VCF here, we probably want it to drop quite low. It's interesting, isn't it, that even if we have that go all the way back down to which, to the um, the filter setting, which um, sounds uh, quite dark when you don't have that attack, by having that initial attack, the fact that the body of the sound is, is darker kind of doesn't seem as dark anymore. So here on the envelope, just to uh, make sure uh, we're clear what's going on here, we've got an instant attack. We've got a pretty fast decay here. And then the sustain is set right the way at the bottom, which means we're dropping all the way back down to wherever the filter is currently set. Where it's decaying. Do you know what? I, I think we can have a little bit of a longer release on this. Um, so let's go into the VCA envelope as well. Um, so we'll have the sustain up full just to begin with. We'll have the attack instant, although we could arguably just ever so slightly, just inch up. So it's just softened ever so slightly. And let's just see what it sounds like with a bit of a longer release. Made the attack a bit too long there, I think. Yeah, I think I like that. Although I think what we could do is if we come into the curve here, we can probably send this to a bit more of a linear release instead. Which sounds a little less natural in terms of the way that um, acoustic sounds decay, but it kind of sounds a bit more vibey, I think. While we're over in this section of the keyboard, uh, we should probably take a look at the high pass filter here as well. Let's try hitting the boost to get a bit more bottom end. Yes. So when we turned up that resonance, it did rob us of some of our bottom end. And that's kind of got that back for us. Let's also, while we're here, check how this sounds. in the upper registers. Do we think up here we're losing just a tiny bit too much top end? Let's see what happens if we give a little bit of the keyboard uh, tracking to the VCF. Don't need much. Just a bit more sizzle up at the top. Still sounding balanced uh, down here. Now, even though I kind of feel like I've got the filter where I want it, just out of interest, let's just see what it sounds like with it a bit darker. See, that's cool. Uh, 
Okay, so I like that darker sound as well. So how about, because um, I don't like having to reach and reset this uh, frequency fader, especially when I feel like it's quite a, a sort of a sweet spot for the main sound. How about that we assign uh, the frequency uh, control here to, mod, to the mod wheel, but rather than it turning up when I turn the mod wheel up, it goes down. Okay, so let's do that. Really straightforward to do if we head into the mod matrix. So I'll hold down the mod button and I'll touch the mod wheel to select that as the source and then I'll just touch the filter cut off to set that as the destination and then here we can set the depth so I'll turn my mod wheel all the way up and as I turn down the depth this time because I want it to get darker you can hear the filter closing off a really cool sound. It's quite funky down there. And it's a more classic prog rock set there. Okay, right. So um, we're kind of almost approaching the end, I think, for this patch because we don't want to overcomplicate it. One thing that is almost certainly a must, I think, is that we want to have a bit of pitch wobble happening. So let's head into the oscillator edit menus and we can see here that our pitch mod source is set to LFO1, uh, which sounds good to me. So if I turn up the pitch mod for oscillator one, starts doing that, it's a very slow LFO, so let's turn up the LFO. Now we don't really want that all the time, we want to be able to bring that in as we play. However, where you would usually assign that, of course, is the mod wheel. But we've set that to be our cool filter cutoff thing. So, where else would it make sense to apply the pitch modulation sort of intensity to? Well, there's one obvious candidate. This is something that uh, the Mo I don't think had, but the DeepMind does have, and that is that the DeepMind has aftertouch. Aftertouch, if you're not aware, so. Um, you kind of have, but you actually have sort of three expressions as you strike a key. You have the velocity, which is how hard, or how fast you strike the key. You also have, actually on the deep mind, um, I haven't used it a whole lot in patches, but it's, a, it's an interesting one. You also have a note off velocity, which is when you hold down a note, how fast you let go of the note. So that's quite an interesting one. The third one that you have is the aftertouch, or as it's referred to in the mod matrix, the pressure, which is once you're holding a note, you can push down on the key some more, and that gives you another level of expression. So what we want to do is we want to uh, apply that aftertouch to the pitch mod of oscillator one, so that we can bring in that vibrato as we hold down the key. Cool. Right, so let's head into the mod matrix and pick an empty slot. So if we hold down the mod button and press the note and then hold it down to trigger the aftertouch, pressure will be set as our mod source. Uh, we then want to move across to our destination and we want to hold down mod and we want to move the pitch mod for oscillator one to set that as our uh, destination. And then if I hold down a note and press hard, I can adjust the depth. And now, as I play, press down hard to apply vibrato. Which, as a, as a, as a guy coming from, a, a, as a guitar player as well, that feels very natural to me, to have that kind of expression, rather than using the mod wheel, actually. Now, there's one thing about this vibrato that is bugging me a little bit at the moment. It's not quite as perfect as it could be. I'll just turn it up again on the slider so you can hear it. Can you hear how that vibrato is somehow kind of... It's not quite as distinct as you might want. So the reason for that is that um, by default, because the DeepMind is a polyphonic synthesizer, actually every single one of these voices here essentially has its own set of LFOs. And by default, they're kind of running independently of one another, which means that they're out of phase. So you don't get quite as 
pure of, uh, of a um, vibrato happening. But it's an easy fix. Uh, and I think it's a setting which is often overlooked, so it's worth knowing about. Uh, so if we head into the LFO1 edit menu and we go down to the bottom here where it says phase, at the moment that's set as poly, which is the default mode. Each of the uh, LFOs are kind of free running, independent of one each, of each other. If we click across one here, we get to the mono mode. And this means that, um, I, I, I don't know precisely whether this means that only one LFO exists or whether all of the LFOs are perfectly synchronized, whichever way it is. So this is how it was before. <laughs> And if we move to mono, you can hear there that that vibrato is much more defined. So now... It's kind of more dramatic and more defined. Back to poly. It's kind of subtle. It's one of those things that's worth getting right in a patch, I think. So one more sort of sound altering uh, parameter that I think it's worth talking about, um, and it's not something that was so easy to do maybe on the on the Mini Moog, is that we have pulse width modulation on the square wave. Now I don't want to go overboard and actually have it modulating, but what we shouldn't overlook is the effect just manually changing that can give you. Kind of reedy and more aggressive. So the pulse here is quite thin. Kind of hollow and a and, uh, bit more bottom end. There's some sweet spots in here though where those harmonics really kind of pull out, I think. There's one. Kind of harpsichord kind of vibe. Sort of around there, I think, is a kind of a sweet spot. Just a little bit up there as well. Just gives us a little bit more of that top end. It's it's sort of emphasising some of the. Upper harmonics, I think. Yeah. If we had another uh, source, if I, uh, you, you can stick a expression pedal uh, into the DeepMind, and we could assign the pulse width modulation via the mod matrix to that expression pedal, and that would be a great way of sort of altering that sound. Or maybe you put it on the mod wheel instead and have the foot pedal doing the uh, filter cutoff. But... I think it, this one makes more sense to leave it on the slider than the filter does, though. So. so I think I'm going to leave that on the slider just for today. Okay, one last thing to address. I kind of said that I wasn't going to go overboard on the effects or anything, but seeing as we do have an effects section here in the Deep Mind, these sort of sounds, I think, once you put them in the mix, you're going to put a little bit of uh, a delay on them, I think. So um, let's go ahead and put some delay on, because we may as well while we're here. So let's head into the effects menu um, in send mode, which is fine. Let's go to the last slot, because I'm only going to put in one. For some reason, I always work backwards on my effects. I don't know why. Uh, so we're going to scroll through, and a bit further on, we get to our delays. There's a couple of different delays here. There's a digital delay. We've got our three and four tap delays, uh, which are quite interesting. What I'm going to head over to, though, is this T-Ray delay. So what this is, is it's an emulation of a type of delay called the oil can delay. Now, if you're not aware of what the oil can delay is, it, it's um, if, you, if you search for the Tel-Ray oil can delay uh, on Google, you'll find all sorts of uh, sites about it. But it's uh, a completely sort of bonkers uh, design that's sort of using... Uh, uh, it's kind of like a tape delay, but rather than having tape spinning around a reel, you've got this sort of uh, magnetic oil 
spinning round and and the kind of delay that it creates is a sort of quite blurred sort of ethereal kind of delay that kind of sits back in the mix and kind of gets out the way uh, which i quite like <laughs> And you can kind of set it to sound more like a, a reverb as well, if you like. Let's head into the um, the effects fine tuning. You can see here we don't get a whole lot of, of stuff here. So one of the things we could do is we can shorten it a little bit. This next value here is sustain, which is essentially our feedback, if you like. So I think it's a bit too long at the moment. Just kind of want to slap back. Uh, we've then got a um, a wobble amount. Uh, feel like I want a lot of wobble today. And then finally we've got a tone. So if we want to darken this down a bit. Now that's a bit darker, I think we can afford to have it go on just a bit longer. And then if we just come back into our uh, effects here, we can turn down the level. subtle but not that subtle uh, so without it it sounds like this and with it sort of somewhere between a delay and a uh, and a reverb and that wobble i think is also introducing a, a slight chorusing which is quite pleasing to me our lead sound so anyway guys thank you so much for joining me on this voyage of tonal discovery today if you enjoyed the video if you found it useful if you like the patch please do make sure you give this video the good old thumbs up also make sure you're subscribed to the channel and if you really want to make sure that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos on the deep mind and on synthesis in general make sure you hit the bell button so that you do actually get a notification when a new video comes out I tend to be put out be putting out two a week at the moment so there's plenty of content to enjoy if you have any suggestions or requests for the types of patches that you'd like to see me cover in upcoming videos then let me know in the comments below but other than that guys thank you so much for joining me once again take care bye bye